Hey everybody, what's up? I'm bringing you a story from Game Rant. Now, this is because Wakanda Forever comes out this weekend. I know it's out in a few places. A few very lucky people have been able to see the movie in a uh, press screening. And they've given their thoughts about it. A lot of people do not like it. And a lot of people do. I mean, this is a, it's a big mixture of people who like it and don't like it. There is a big difference financially from the second movie to the first movie as well as critical reviews from the second movie to the first movie, as well as another TV show that, that I have recently spoken about. We're going to compare and contrast those two as well while we talk about uh, this story here. Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, ticket sales are lagging behind Doctor Strange 2. Projections show Black Panther, Wakanda Forever should have an amazing premiere weekend, though still Marvel's second best this year. So Doctor Strange 2, I had initially praised, and then I gave it a second watch, and it, it turned out there were a lot of things that I didn't like that I didn't notice the first time I'd seen it. Of course, you know, when you're taking your family, you're, you're focused a lot on how your kids are, you know, enjoying the film or not, and, you know, what if they need drinks and need to go to the bathroom. So I think I was a lot, very much half-focused on what was going on, and there, but there were things that stood out to me that that I liked it first and then when I went back to I'm just like man they really did kill off a bunch of these characters that we were looking forward to seeing and some we didn't expect to see but were excited about then they get killed off and they just did a whole bunch wrong with that you know they they did belittle the men especially the main character Doctor Strange I mean he really did not get any heroic moments in this film in that film at all you know he just watched Scarlet Witch and other people take all of the glory from him and um, it turns out that they're doing something similar in this film though you know a, it is really sad about uh, Chadwick Boseman passing, and the film does do its best to portray uh, allegedly how it, how I mean I haven't seen the film. I'm going to go see it tonight this because uh, I really want to share my opinion on it too. I want to see what about it people don't like and what people do like, and see if I can just come to my own conclusion about it. Though I don't have a lot of faith because of Marvel's track history with shoving all of this woke crap down people's throats every single day. It's gotten so tiresome and, and it has dissuaded me and actually a lot of other people that I know um, from seeing any more Marvel films or any Disney Plus content. It's really sad. It's really sad what's happened to the MCU after Endgame, um, you know, with the, with the exception of Spider-Man No Way Home. Black Panther Wakanda Forever is one of the most highly anticipated movies in 2022. However, to many people's surprise, interest in the sequel so far seems a tad below another of Marvel's blockbusters for this year. Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Okie dokie. Currently, Doctor Strange 2 stands as Marvel Studios' biggest hit in Phase 4 after the film amassed $955.7 million in the box office earnings worldwide on a $200 million budget, a milestone Disney executives sure have on their sides for Wakanda Forever, seeing as the original Black Panther became a $1.34 billion phenomenon. I actually have that right here to be confirmed. I looked it up myself because I was super curious about it, but yeah, it amassed $1.348 billion. Made a lot of money. That is a lot of money. I mean, make no mistake about that. Um, but if you look back here, we will continue the story. Nevertheless, forecasts stemming from ticket sales all the way through Sunday might hint, hint at an uphill battle for Wakanda Forever, especially when considering the movie cost an extra $50 million to be made. According to Deadline, Wakanda Forever has so, so far sold $45 million worth of movie tickets for its opening weekend, roughly 20% down. 20% down from what Doctor Strange and the Scarlet Witch had achieved, but still much higher than Thor Love and Thunder, which was a crap movie. Oh my goodness. I, you know, my, my, my kids were just like, oh yeah, you know, it's something to watch in the background, but man, I could not stand that movie. It was just so terrible. It was just terrible. Uh, regardless of that, most industry insiders aren't too obsessed with those numbers, especially on a holiday weekend that will see many of Marvel's younger audience in, uh, audiences in the United States enjoying a break from school on Friday due to Veterans Day. Commercial projections for Wakanda Forever have the film targeting a 175 to $185 million opening weekend in the U.S. and a $355 to $365 million total worldwide, both of which would put it slightly behind what Doctor Strange 2 achieved, $187.4 million in the U.S. and Canada, or $452.4 million globally. 
While initial critics for Black Panther Wakanda Forever appeared to agree on the movie not quite hitting the same heights as 2018's Black Panther, Ryan Coogler's second superhero gig is still off to a great start, is it really? Wakanda Forever is a film largely defined by the passing of Chadwick Boseman, whose legacy has expanded well beyond filmmaking due to his relationship with many of the people that worked on Black Panther. Marvel and Coogler's decision not to recast T'Challa has not exactly been met with unanimous approval from the fan base yet, at the very least. If there's one thing the entire cast has made clear, is that this, this is the movie they wanted to make to honor the late actor. So, it turns out that if uh, this is a... Uh, this, I mean, this it's probably not even a spoiler since it's been in the trailers, like a bunch of them already, but I mean, it turns out that Shuri is probably going to be the Black Panther, and, and when she is, I mean, that's going to be the legacy of Black Panther. They chose not to recast him. They chose to just let the character die, which contradicts the idea of legacy, in my opinion, but I mean, who knows, right? Um, but it, no, it's not been met with unanimous approval because if you look back all the way back to 2016 in Civil War, that's when we first saw Chadwick Boseman as Black Panther, and he played such a huge, significant role in that film, and it was an emotional and thought-provoking one at that especially when it came to the villain of the movie. And then he, I mean, his story progressed all the way into 2018's um, Infinity War. And he played a huge role in that as well. And, and, and he had an even more like painstakingly emotional moment when he uh, disappeared due to the snap by Thanos. And now they're just erasing that basically because he died and they've chosen not to recast him. But they did the same thing for the Incredible Hulk, right? I mean, they completely recasted him with Mark Ruffalo. Why couldn't they have done that with Black Panther, especially with Black Panther being one of Marvel's biggest movie successes, like, in history? I mean, The Incredible Hulk was, was just a stepping stone to bigger Marvel entertainment like The Avengers. But even with that, even with just Black Panther was just such a huge, um, was just such a huge stamp on the Marvel quota. It was just crazy. Let's continue, though. In what, by most accounts, has proven to be a divisive phase four, phase 4 for the MCU, Black Panther Wakanda Forever is being heralded as the best film to come out of it, a title alone that's perhaps much more valuable than financial success. Rotten Tomatoes, and we're going to look at it in a second, but Rotten Tomatoes gives it good reviews. The, the, the critics do. Now, I've seen some of the audience reviews as well, and they don't have a percentage out for them, but you can still read some of them. And I'd like to go through a couple of them with you guys so you can get a, a picture as to what's happening both in audience perception and uh, in, the, in the grand perception of agenda pushing, okay? We'll take a look at that in this video. So let's go over to Rotten Tomatoes right now. Um, and if you see right here, Black Panther Wakanda Forever is at 86% by the critics. You know, it's really interesting because when I look at the critics, it just looks like there's a lot of negative reviews and they and there's a is a big mixture of good reviews to bad reviews. Um, a really good mixture. And the people who give it bad reviews are pretty nasty about it. It's a sequel that bores me in perpetuity with its abundance of one-dimensional female characters and most of all bland action that exposes the anthropological side of Marvel without any sense of wonder. I mean, that's that's wow. Um, there's a smaller story about Solace buried somewhere in here, but Phase 4 has no interest in that. And then you have good reviews about Black Panther Wakanda Forever is deeply impactful at honoring the legacy of an important king, the healing that, that comes from that for a community, and forging a new path for these characters. It's a grounded and epic ending for the inconsistent Phase 4. And it's widely known that Phase 4 has been one of the worst, I mean, it's basically the worst phase for Marvel thus far, and... Um, it's, it's really sad. But I find this to be interesting because if you look at this and then you look at The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, do you see anything similar here? With, you, with an audience score that you can't see um, on Black Panther Wakanda Forever yet, here you can see that the re critic response was 85%. Okay, and as you know from my videos, Rings of Power wasn't very good and I did not enjoy it and many people who commented on my videos also did not enjoy it. But if you see this 85% and you look here, oh, sorry, let me go back, make sure I'm uh, on the right one. Okay, look, 86%, um, sorry, 86%, 85%. I'm starting to just see this trend here. I mean, if you haven't seen a trend by now, it's, it's been here a while, but it, it's, it's coming into focus a lot more. 
Black Panther reviewers and Lord of the Rings reviewers for the Rings of Power are very similar in nature that they praise the movie even though it might not be good. The Rings of Power is terrible, so why is it getting an 85% Rotten Tomato score? And then this is getting 86%, and it's like proven... I don't even know if we can... We just can't trust Rotten Tomatoes. I think that's been decided. Because the audience reviews paint an interesting picture as well. I clicked on it, and... You know, I, I, some of these I suspect to be bots, but I want to look at it with you guys. Give me your thoughts in the comments. Really, I, I really love to hear you guys' thoughts on these. Jamar says, a great return to grace for Marvel. I mean, well, at least that person's admitting that they haven't been very graceful as of late, especially with Disney+. Plus. I don't know if they agree with me on that one. First, an amazing movie, and I think Namor is the best character because still like a villain. Okay. I wasted my time to watch this. I will not waste <laughs> more for wider comments. Okay, fair enough. And I really do. I really do try to think about who, which of these might be uh, bots. I really do try to think about it. I don't. I don't delve into all of their accounts, but um, it is really interesting to see some of these. So check this out. This is not the typical Marvel movie where you'll see everyone just having a big war. The story behind the entire movie is awesome. The music score was a perfect election. It went beyond my expectations. So the story behind the movie, it's the story behind, don't, it's not the movie, that's awesome. No, 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 it's the story, okay? And this person is just like, so bad, not worth the watch. This person gave a three-star review, but I don't speak that language, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, too much flashback, boring, and the ending is not clear. The main trouble is other country making, make vibranium detector. But the ending is not mentioned about that. All of Marvel movie in 2022 is not worth to watch, okay? <laughs> I think it's a very good and powerful movie, including mourning for those who have passed away, but we will miss him forever. And I will actually miss Chadwick Boseman. I, I love his acting, and I love him as Black Panther. It was really sad to hear about all that. Um, and I like the girl's power. It looks so powerful. Okay, which girl? Which girl in the movies? Which girl's power? Uh, there's a few of them that have powers. I don't even know if any of those powers are nat natural powers or just like augmented powers. So which girl is it you're talking about there? Okay, five stars. Fair enough. All right, whatever. In all honesty, this movie might be the best Marvel movie since Endgame and No Way Home. Its star is not the action or the CGI, but the story. Oh, that's interesting. They're saying the story. It's not the stars or the action or the CGI, but the story. It's an amazing exploration into grief and loss with an amazing script and moments that leave you feeling the character's emotions, all with an amazing score to hit you even harder in moments of wonder and sadness. Oh my goodness, that's such amazing praise. But again, 85%, 86%. Do you think that The Rings of Power was a good show? If not, why would you think that this movie would be good when they've both gotten the same critic score? What was this? My G, what a spectacular movie, the best of the year. What a wonderful cast, impeccable performances, and Letitia rocked a Shuri, and I loved Ironheart, and being able to get attached to Namor. Okay, great. And then you see this one. I expected a good story, character development, fun, and good action sequences, and what I get, a long, boring movie with some action and bad character development and some great and poor CGI, that's it. Oh my goodness, he didn't sound very happy about that. One of the best movies in the MCU. I mean, are you sensing a pattern here? There is a pattern. There's a good one and then a really bad one and then a good one, but then a kind of okay one and then a really bad one. You know, it's weird. The film is noteworthy and absolutely worth watching. However, it suffers like every project of the fourth phase from a compressed and ill-conceived third act. Need more cameo, Ironheart. Oh my goodness. Oh, they didn't like Ironheart very much, huh? Nope, they didn't sound like fans. Probably the best MCU movie yet. Boring. Typical Marvel movie. More of the same. A great sequel, in my opinion. It's an epic movie to watch. Very loose and unentertaining. Oh, my word. So, anyway, I think you get the point. And this is going to segue, hopefully, smoothly into my next point. And uh, once I find it. I found it. Okay. 15 MCU supporting characters ranked by likability. And this one has one heart. That's very funny. So the reason I wanted to bring everyone to this is because supporting characters are leading Wakanda forever. And that movie is estimated to make far, significantly far less money than the first movie did. Okay, and I think that there are many reasons for that. I think that's because partially uh, the culture shift with uh, you know people rejecting a lot of woke ideas that are being pushed down uh, our throats every single day. 
And then there are people who just didn't see it because T'Challa wasn't in it. T'Challa was dead. They didn't recast the actor. I mean, it, a lot of that movie was carried by Chadwick Boseman and his performance. I mean, he was the central focus of that movie, and they've completely removed him. They've removed him from the second film, leaving the supporting characters in charge. That brings me to this story. 15 MCU supporting characters ranked by likability. Okay, now the story is not important itself because it's talking about Miss Marvel, which was a critical success, of course, but not watched by many people. That falls into the pattern, I think, as well. Then you got, so you got Bruno, you've got Nikki, you've got Aunt May, Jimmy Woo, Ned Lees. They, they talk a lot about these characters. Heimdall, Katie, Darcy Lewis, M'Baku, Yandu, Wong, Lewis, Valkyrie, Okoy, Korg, you know, I mean, you guys see what they did to Korg in, in the newest Thor movie? Oh my goodness gracious. I mean, he just became just a laughingstock mockery of, of what I thought was a genuinely funny, innocent character in the first movie. Then you have Valkyrie, who, if you know who Valkyrie is in the, in the most recent Thor movie, I mean, I liked her at first too. I know like some people say that they didn't like Thor Ragnarok. I thought it was a fun time, and I thought that Valkyrie was fun at first because I assumed that Marvel would take a, the right course of making her a redeemable character with a great personality, but it turns out that not only did she not change for the better, she became a lot worse with her mannerisms as the movies went on. And so that's why I don't like her. You know, Aquafina, she wasn't really that interesting of a character to me. At, at times she came off annoying her, her acting, or in particular where the movie thought that what she was saying was funny, but it, it wasn't. And I actually liked Shang Chi, and when in in that movie, that movie was okay. Uh, but you know, Aquafina, I didn't really care for her as a supporting character. But you know, Okoy is actually really awesome. I love her as, as a character. I don't really have a problem with her at all. Um, but it's as as far as her leading or any of them, any of these supporting characters, you know, it, it, not just the women characters, the men characters as well. Mbaku, honestly, I mean, okay, to be fair, I I think Mbaku would have made a great Black Panther, right? I think he would have, because he, he gave great performances. I hear nothing but good things about him in this movie, though his time apparently is very short. I know Chris Gore went to see it recently. He talked with Nerd, Nerd Roddick about it earlier today. And it's it's been really in interesting to see what they think about it. But M'Baku, in my opinion, I think would have made a great Black Panther. I think that would have been a great way to uh, push that legacy forward, because M'Baku has been in previous Marvel movies. You know, He played a huge part in, in the defense of Wakanda in Infinity War. And he was a huge central character, more like an anti-hero slash general in the first Black Panther movie. Fully capable as a character and as an actor, uh, that, that actor who brings brings that character to life, M'Baku, he does a great job. A really great job. Yondu, I mean, he, he would have been great on his own series, I think. Um, but I don't think that he would have been able to lead. But it, again, these characters are taking the front and center. You notice that happens a lot it's with, with Doctor Strange. They did the same thing. You know, Wanda has always been a supporting character, at least at least from the way that Marvel uh, Cinematic Universe has portrayed her. Um, but she she still gives great performance. She's a, she's got her own show, you know, and everything. Uh, she takes way center focus more than Doctor Strange in that movie, and she defeats herself in the end. Valkyrie is also taking the lead a lot in Thor: Love and Thunder. And uh, Okoy, I think she does. I don't think she, they've really done all that much uh, with her just taking charge in everything. But Korg. Oh my goodness, they just wasted his character. I don't know, he's just a, a joke now to, to me. That's my opinion. Their whole approach to this entire thing with putting all of these supporting characters and the roles of the main characters that everybody fell in love with is not working. It's showing in the, in the financial downfall of Disney uh, and, and it, you know all the aberrant reviews of Disney Plus's shows and movies that they've pushed out for Marvel and Star Wars. It's just not gonna, it's not gonna end well. And... I worry for the future of the MCU at this point. A lot of people that I like think that it's dead. And I would hope that it's not going to die and that people can course correct it, but I don't see a lot of hope for it now. Um, more remains to be seen, but that, this is just my view on it. I hope you guys enjoyed this longer video than usual. I appreciate you guys sticking around for as long as you may have. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. If I haven't said that before, like and share this video, subscribe, click that notification bell. I appreciate all of you. I hope to see you all again next time.